Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... Uh, train. Should... Should be on the train. Peter. Unless Peter... Oh! Oh! In a vast, desolate landscape, torn by wind, part night, part day, a woman's bare feet stumble through the grass. The train. Couldn't stay on the train. Her robes, a nightdress, and a silken dressing gown flow out behind her in the wind. Her hair, long and blonde, is blown over her face. She doesn't notice it. She doesn't see anything. I must get away. Away from it. The dead. The dead man. How can I talk to a dead man? Oh! Oh! Jessica slips, stumbles, and falls onto the grass. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let him come here. Don't let him. Please. She groans, turns on her back, and stares up at the wild sky. Her blue eyes flood with tears. All is quiet but the sound of the dying wind. Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel discover a case of amnesia and wonder if it could lead to a grave charge. The Huntington Hospital is situated in spacious grounds near the river at Bury St. Edmunds in the county of Suffolk. It is the sort of rambling, friendly hospital to which many patients are sent when they reach the convalescent stage of recovery. In a private ward, a small single room, a young woman is lying in bed. She stirs occasionally, muttering incoherently. Sometimes her blue eyes open, but they see nothing. On a small side table near the bed is a tape recorder. It is on. The red dial shows it is recording, but there's little to record. No, it can't be. No, no. It's all right. It's all right. There's nothing to worry about now. Mrs. Peel rose from a chair and switched the recorder off. Just rest now. Close your eyes and rest. No, no. Mrs. Peel walked to the window and gazed out at the grey skies. There was more than a hint of rain in the air. It was overcast and somewhat depressing. She turned from the window back to the patient. As she did so, the door opened. It was Steed and Mother. Steed was pushing Mother's wheelchair. I can only hope this doesn't take too long, Steed. Well, that rather depends on many things, doesn't it, Mother? Oh, there are hospitals, depressing places. Spent too long in them. When I came out of them, where do I end up? Uh, in a wheelchair. Well, at least it's mobile. Morning, Mrs. Peel. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Mother. I fail to see anything remotely good about it, Mrs. Peel. This is the girl, is it? Hmm? Yeah, well, any progress? Nothing. She hasn't said anything at all coherent. Just a lot of vague mutterings which mean nothing. Nothing means something. Yeah. The doctor says she's suffering from concussion, lacerations, abrasions, bruises, and severe shock. Nothing too serious. Uh, yes. So, let's have a look at her. Uh, what do you think, Steve? Well, she's pretty. I meant the situation. Unpleasant for her. Uh, do you know who she is yet? Mm, Helen Pritchard. The secretary works in London. Mm, quick work. That part was easy. We traced her by the clothes she was wearing. There they are. Steed walked over and with the tip of his umbrella hooked up a soiled dressing gown and nightdress. 
Is this all? I thought you said she was found in a field. She was. Wearing just the... Wearing just those. Intriguing, eh? Not to mention chilly. <sighs> Steed, I do wish you'd take this seriously. Well, is it? Serious, I mean? You said yourself she isn't badly hurt. I mean, there's no bones broken. All right, the circumstances are bizarre, but there doesn't seem much that nursing and a careful psychological approach can't cure. I agree. Are you both trying to override my judgment? I was simply trying to understand it. I mean, why should you feel this is so important? And why should we become involved? Vanity. Huh? My vanity. It's all I have left these days. Vanity. I want to put one over on that new department. You know, the one formed to investigate strange and inexplicable happenings. Oh, I mean the one they've given to old Croker Ways Goose. Yeah, that's right. Either that or pensioning him off, out to grass and all that. Really presents no opposition... But it'd be nice to beat about their own game, establish superiority at once. Hmm, it would be nice to eat. Personally, I've always thought that Waze Goose was a strange and inexplicable happening in himself. All right, if you think that's sufficient reason, I've no objections to working uh, on this young lady. No, no, that is what I think it is. I'll be around, Mother. Don't worry. Just as well. Hmm. Found in the middle of nowhere, eh? Hmm, a field down by the river. Wearing a nightdress, eh? Right. Well, then. Yes, indeed. Yes, Doesn't make sense. I mean, where on earth did she come from? Oh. Wheel me out, Mrs. Peel. Tell Steve to come to me the moment he's found that out. <laughs> natural place to start, even for Steed, was the place where Helen Pritchard had been found. Steed enlisted the help of one of Mother's men, Captain Cordell, commandeered a station wagon and was driven to the spot. Pretty bleak out here, sir. Bouncy, too. Yes. She was found about here, sir. Thank heavens for that. Uh, the, we've arrived, I mean. Oh. Hmm. As you say, bleak. Steed stood up in the station wagon and looked around him. Sweet nothing at all. She must have walked quite a way, whatever direction she came from. A river down there. And a railway over there. No damp on the clothing, so one might rule out the riverside. And the railway... Hmm. Yes, that's the next stop. Uh, the nearest railway station, Captain. Right, then. I think we'll have a progress report to give Mother after all. an hour or so later, Captain Cordell made his report to Mother, who'd established a headquarters in the doctor's staff room. It was near the canteen, and it had a bar. Yeah, better. <clears throat> the train, you say, Cordell? That's right, sir. The train went through about an hour before Helen Pritchett was found in that field. Now, the field was a big one. There's a busy road on one side, a river flowing on the other. Not likely that Miss Pritchard could have got into the field from Bellis and Edmonds without being seen. If she'd come from the river, the chances are she'd have had mud or water stains on her clothing. But if she'd come off the train, it was the night express and it was a sleeper. Mm, a train. That would explain the nightdress. She was traveling in a sleeping berth. And... I fully appreciate the ramifications of the discovery, Captain Cordell, so she came off a train. But one thing remains unanswered. I can guess what you're thinking, sir. Yes. Did she fall, or was she pushed? In the small private ward, Helen Pritchard seemed rather less restless. She was now awake, but her eyes were still vague, uncomprehending. She stared about her as Cordell entered. Are you feeling any better? Oh, I don't know. I'm Emma Peel. This is John Steed. Oh, and, um... Uh, Cordell, Captain Peter Cordell. Peter. Peter. The name Peter. You can't recall your own name? No. Yes. Uh, no, I don't know. Pritchard. You are Helen Pritchard. Helen? You were traveling somewhere, Helen. You took a train. A night sleeper. You remember taking a train? Yes. You took a train. You were on it. And then? A, a coffin. A dead man. A dead man in his coffin. Dead man who isn't dead. Ah! Oh, no. Helen, Helen, please, it's all right. Easy now, easy. There. Well, whatever it was that happened, she doesn't want to remember. 
dead man in his coffin. A dead man who isn't dead? It's quite a coincidence. You see, there was a coffin aboard that train. I ran the checklist of passengers and freight. There was a coffin aboard. Inhabited? It had a dead man in it, all right. Where was it going? To a place called the Happy Meadows for burial. Steed had no trouble in tracing the Happy Meadows burial ground. It announced itself with a large sign which read, Happy Meadows, the inn place to be buried in. Steed found the manager's office. That read, Be a Happy Chap. Steed raised an eyebrow, removed his bowler, rapped on the door with his umbrella, and entered. The slim young man behind the desk looked up with tremendous enthusiasm. Good morning, my dear sir. Good morning to you. Good morning. My name is Steed, John Steed. Happy chap. Uh, moderately today. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I am happy chap. Bagpipes, happy chap. How do you do? Bagpipes? My father's fault, you see. When my mother told him, well, she was presenting him with a squeaky little bundle. I mean, he was convinced that she meant the set of bagpipes he'd always set his heart on. And then when I arrived, well, it was his way of fighting back. A sad burden. Yes. And I'm not even Scots. I mean, if I'd been a Scot, at least the name would have had a partisan ring about it. Well, never mind. Look on the bright side. Your father might have had an obsession about synthesizers. Or are you too old for that? Quite so, quite so. Well, now, sir, to business. Mind you, looking you over, I can't quite see that we will be doing business for quite some time ahead. But you are planning, no doubt, yes, to select your plot now. Now, here is the ledger. Uh, well, actually, I really didn't... You are in luck. I can squeeze you in between two peers of the realm. Or perhaps you would prefer this one. It has an admiral to your port, a midshipman to your starboard, and a submarine commander astern of you. <laughs> yes, well, I'm not here on that kind of business. Oh, I see. Well, in that case... A body was brought here the other day by train. Do you recall it? Oh, indeed I do. A class one internment with 17 wreaths of assorted plastic flowers, simulated mock marble headstone. They stand up to the elements far better than the real thing, you know. Mm. And our special offer, oak casket. Get in while stocks last. I remember it precisely. Yes. Uh, where is the body buried? In our most exclusive area. Paradise plot. Believe me, Mr. Steed... You just haven't lived until you're buried in Paradise Plot. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.